what's going on guys and girls welcome to my mess what i was going to show you today is this project i've been working on for my future wind generator system that's going to be a hybrid the kind of fitting because i have toyota prius cells which are hybrid cells but what i mean by hybrid is i'm running lots of solar but i'll also have wind and that wind will use these cells in a 12 volt configuration typically you don't see that with these this is designed to run on 12 volts i have another unit that i think i'm going to run on here this is an inverter by the way that will function all the way up to 16 volts i'm not sure how high this will allow i'm going to have to do some testing because typically you'll get an over voltage warning so the other unit i have that will probably be used with this bank of batteries is capable of running all the way up to 16 volts that's not how high we will operate these because i want to make sure i protect the cells when you have two of these in combination the maximum amount of power you would probably put into this is about 16.2 volts or so and that would be your peak and since we know we don't want to run nickel metal hydride lithium iron phosphate or lithium polymer all the way at peak constantly you want to make sure you don't overcharge your batteries i'm going to drop this down and protect this at about 15 volts it'll go a little over that if i let it but i'm trying to protect them at 15 volts with this system what you're looking at is battery protection circuit and the way this works is once this hits 15 volts this uh, zener diode will kick on this 10 amp transistor it's just 3055 standard transistor it may be 15 amp once that kicks on it will start burning off any extra energy that's coming in it's not at a super extreme rate so basically, you know, you could still overcharge the batteries if you didn't have a, a type of BMS, like a switch device that would turn it off. What it will allow is for these to be top balanced at the top voltage I want them at. So typically around 15 volts, these will top balance out. I just bought a controller that will allow me to adjust the voltage turn the charger on when I want to and turn it off when I want to. I think I'm going to have to run a separate relay along with this because most likely this one is not set up correctly. So I will probably have to do that or rewire the relay. I haven't got to that point yet. That's like one of the next steps. So what I was going to show you is this protection circuit. This is not in its operating condition as far as like how it would operate with the battery because this battery functions a little bit different than a power supply. And what I mean is, let me turn this power down. We'll go down to 13 volts. Once you attach it to a high amperage battery like this, it'll function slightly different than just running it off this low amperage power supply because it maxes out at 5 amps. So I'm going to connect my positive and my negative of the power supply to this circuit and simulate this battery just so you can see what it's actually doing. Otherwise, it's not quite as visible. If I go up in voltage and you will watch that first circuit, see how this led indicator light turns on and you may or may not be able to see that but the bulb is burning what that does is it starts drawing amps and the more voltage it goes in the higher the amps draw and you can see now the lights much brighter that's how it works I was actually trying to keep from blowing up this battery then I would be able to bleed off the higher voltages since I'll probably set it at roughly 15.5 volts for the shutoff that should allow enough time for these batteries to all balance top balance it would go up and down and up and down until all of these were balanced out so that's the best i could do without buying something because i haven't yet found anything that works for these type of cells so you pretty much have to build it there may be something out there but i haven't been able to find it basically they're going to be a complete prius battery pack which is 28 cells total 14 paired with all of the protection circuits on them a bms to control how high it charges and how low it can go before it stops once it hits a certain voltage it will turn on one of these inverters and operate a set of chargers that will charge a 48 volt system and that will allow me to run an old 12 volt system that I've had around that's still good operate that with the current system that I have so I'm not wasting any of it we'll see how it works it may or may not work well 
we'll find out but I feel like it's going to be fine. If you're familiar with cheaper BMS's typically you have the ability to charge through two different negative ports. One of them would be a higher amperage and the other one would be maybe half of that amperage. This works in a similar way. These are my bus bars. Right now all I've got is uh, aluminum. It should work fine for this. Each pack of these is going to be considered one 12 volt battery. It actually is going to operate between 13 and 15 volts. That way we don't go too far down and we don't go too far up. And I may actually raise the bottom up just a tiny bit. As long as my equipment runs off of it, it shouldn't matter. This allows me to isolate each pack for each one of these protection circuits but it also allows me to charge the packs as a whole so I can link the packs together to charge with this green wire and then the black is the negative wire for the output. It's just two really large 10 amp diodes that will allow one source as a charge circuit and one source as a output circuit. And the interesting thing is if I was charging and outputting at the same time, this should allow for these batteries to be bypassed if they're not really needed. That means that hopefully there's not a bunch of cycling going on with these batteries. But it's going to work a whole lot like the Prius works. Really I just need to start assembling this and then figure out my output circuit that I'm going to run with this so I can turn the whole bank off or divert the whole load or whatever I need to do. So I've got all my wiring put in. Chose the bottom rail for positive and then I've got my charge rail in between them and then the negative rail at the top each one of these is a positive and a negative connection to these batteries and I'll eventually cut these down and, and set it up where all my BMS stuff is connected I may actually cut them flush it just depends I want to have these where I can connect something to it if I need to basically I'll probably have output terminals at the top or on this one side because I need to run it through the the management system. I got a bit of a rat's nest, but I do have every cell fit across this perfectly, which is really cool because I didn't want to have to have some laying up on their side on the top. I've got all the negative stuff connected, everything that goes through the negative terminal. I need to connect the positive. It's kind of nerve wracking because one false move and you're going to blow something up. <laughs> Alright, this is what it looks like. I've got a few cells that are burning off some voltage that they've had in them this whole time. It's been almost a year since I pulled these out of that car. I swapped them with some better batteries because these were getting old and degraded and I know somebody had been in there. They changed a few cells or did something and uh, didn't put it all back, of course. That's the way most people are nowadays. They just don't care. At least I got all these cells out of it and they're all close to 15 volts or or better hopefully when everything's said and done they will all be about the same voltage that's the next step i'm going to try to build my output and see how we can control it so i'm going to test this unit and see how it works i'm trying to test this thing i think there has to be a certain difference between your on and off and it might be a little too tight for what i'm trying to do that's exactly what it is because when it hits 12.8 it turns on and charges all the way up and then turns off at 15.7. All I'm doing is using this capacitor bank to charge and discharge. And this is not working like it's supposed to. Let me reset. It doesn't work like it's supposed to. Definitely not as advertised. And all I want to do is see if I can get all of these peaked off where they're all lit. And then I can unplug it or disconnect it from the charger. And that should allow it to all settle to about the same voltage. And all I'm trying to do is just make sure that I could peak this whole pack off without messing any single pair of cells up. I'm trying to avoid going too high on the voltage for the inverter. Alright, so the next day is set overnight and it looks like everything's balanced now. Except I've got two that aren't working. I've got my meter out and found out the little cheap switching diodes on those two are bad. They must have went out when I hooked them up because I tested all the circuits before I ever did hook them up. I have messed around with these things and messed around with these things. And I can tell you it's gimmicky. When I would hook it up, no matter what the settings were set at, after a random amount of time, 
it would start charging and then it would stop at the right spot or roughly and then it would drop considerably below what I was setting it to and then uh, start charging again so it's very very unreliable and it never will set correctly no matter what battery I'm using I think there's something going on with these I think it's a gimmick and the reason why I think that is because looking at them online you can't see behind this heat sink and I'm pretty sure what's behind this heat sink gonna be some zener diodes instead of a comparator or something like that that actually tells it the voltage who knows how they're actually getting any adjustment out of it, it these aren't going to work the way they're supposed to as i decided well i'm going to make one that's similar to the setup for the batteries depending on this resistor is going to depend on when this shuts off so what i have set up here now is a big rat's nest but i've got a 16 volt zener when it gets to 17 volts it kicks on this relay which then will turn this little bulb on and then whenever i turn the voltage back down it will shut off right at 13 volts which is interesting i think i can adjust the shut off parameter with a different resistor before i do anything else i'm going to try a different zener because it's the voltage is getting up to 17 i don't like that but let's let me show you what i'm talking about 17 and then it kicks on and then as i drop it down it will operate until i get down to 13 volts it's almost perfect the way it is right now with this specific transistor and i don't even i just found one in a box the mosfets turn on so easily that there would be a considerable amount of circuitry just to get it to work right i feel like this is going to be super reliable once I get the correct resistance value and the correct zener on here. So let me swap the zener out and see if I can get a better result. I put a 15 volt zener in since it takes about an extra volt to kick things on. And I do believe this is perfect at this point. If I turn it up, there it goes. I went a little over, but about 16.5 turns it on. And then we'll go down to 13. 13 volts turns it off. That's exactly what I want this battery to operate off of. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mock this up on a board and see, like I mean, nothing seems to be getting warm. The only thing drawing any amperage is this little bulb, it's a five watt bulb, and it's not drawing from this circuit, it's actually drawing through this relay, which was the idea, except I would use a bigger relay. The resistance in this relay could be an issue with the on and off. So I'm gonna put this relay on. This is 30 amp, and I will never, probably never try to charge this battery with 30 amps. We're going to probably just use this. See what happens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap this relay out and we'll test it real quick. Just like I suspected, the uh, resistance on the coil of this relay is actually adjusting the off setting for this bulb. So it's turning off at 15.2 volts, which I don't like. I really need to match this resistance. What I'll probably do is I'll probably just use this relay. This relay could then operate another relay, which would allow for it to start charging and stop charging at the right voltages because it's, it's perfect with this amount of resistance. Finally, after days of work and figuring out that this is a TIP3055, right? It's fake. It does not work on the circuit. When I built the original circuit, they worked fine. I built all of these. I spent two and a half days building all that, only to find out that all the transistors I bought were cheap fakes and they didn't work. They would turn on suddenly at a higher voltage than they were supposed to and then they wouldn't turn off until it was way too low of voltage and so when i went back through i found enough of these laying around that i've had over the years that i was able to rebuild it now when it turns on turns on at 15 volts and then it turns off at about 14 and a half volts or so that'll protect these cells from being overcharged we're at 14.4 volts so not only does that help balance it, it also helps protect these cells. So I should get a lot of life out of them. The next step is to go ahead and hook up my uh, amp meter, which this isn't hooked up yet. That way I can test how many amps the inverter is going to draw when I'm trying to run 
at least just one charger because I don't think my inverter that I've got this one here I don't know that it'll run two but for sure it'll run one I want to run it through here so I can see what the amp draw is then I want to test it I want to load test it with the charger hooked up I want to test the other circuit that I built which will turn the charging off and on and turn the load off and on this is my circuit I ran it through a spice program and everything checks out on it as well. The one thing about this, everything you use is going to change how it functions. In other words, it may turn on at a little bit different voltage and off at a little bit different voltage based on the resistances that you're going to find as you build these things. I mean, if you have a different kind of relay or if you have a little bit different kind of transistor or anything like that, it could affect it. What I would suggest is to put an adjustable transistor in here like most of these have. I've just got a, a 100 ohm transistor in there that will pull this transistor down so it would basically turn it off at certain voltage and you could probably put a variable in line with that or whatever and adjust it. I cut these off, went ahead and added this 100 amp DC breaker, mounted the big shunt for this unit which eventually will hopefully tell us the capacity and all that kind of stuff. I don't know how to reset it. I guess I'm going to have to look it up. And then I put in the circuit for the load control, the charge control, which both are going to be operated right here. The charge, since it's going to charge with more amps, I've got this relay here. It's not big enough. I'm going to eventually have to put a, a big solenoid in, but for now I'm, I can run almost 30 amps through that, which is pretty good. I mean, I could probably run 400 watt solar panels into this, which may be perfect. And I've got to test out the wind charger to see how many amps it puts out. That's what that will control. And of course, that goes into the charge circuit. And then the other relay that's on here operates this. Now, I want to test to see if it's working right. Well, I've got a switch here that turns that unit on. You can hear that turn on. So the question is, will this turn on when... I turned that on which would automatically run the load because until it hits 13 volts it won't start the charging cycle. Let's see what happens when I close this and then do this. Sure enough the load is on. Now we need to run it down and see what happens. 230 milliamps being drawn. That's not bad for that. We started out at 14.1. Put almost a 10 amp load on it. Now we're Getting down to about 12.9. I've got this hot glue gun as a load. 12.8. Now it's charging. <laughs> <laughs> 